Hey guys, welcome back to another Mod Bros video. This has been one that's been requested for a little bit. Before we start, we just want to make a big thank you to Foam Blast for shouting us out in one of the recent videos. It really helped us out and we got a lot of noise from their subscribers, so we thank you. And if you guys are here from Foam Blast, thank you for coming. I hope you guys like the channel. But with this video, we are going to be going over how I set up the internals for my Alpha Trooper and explaining how to make them. But I already have an Alpha Trooper, so I don't really need to make new internals for an Alpha Trooper. So I'm going to be taking the same sort of internals that I have in the Alpha Trooper, and I'll put it into a Retaliator. So I already have a Retaliator here ready to go, and then I have all the parts that you might need in order to make this, and we're just going to show you guys how to make it and what parts you need. Alright, so now we're going to be going over everything you need in order to build these homemade internals. Went to the store, grabbed everything else that I needed, and then now we'll cut to some clips of us getting to the store so we can show you exactly what parts you need. But it's actually very simple. Mostly what you need, half inch PVC, three quarter inch PVC, and then one inch PVC. That is how you build this breech uh, bolt sled sort of setup. And then you also need some acrylic for these side plates if you're doing it for a retaliator. For an alpha trooper, I didn't need them. You're also going to need two O-rings, one for the breech right here, and then another one for the plunge rod. I don't have a second one, so we'll scab into one from somewhere. Now we're going to go over the parts that you need for the plunger rod. Alright, so I've just grabbed the plunger rod out of the Alpha Trooper so I can better explain to you guys what you all need. So basically, the way this plunger rod works, and I'll give you guys a nice little close-up picture on it, because I know I didn't in the last video. But basically, it all starts with a little threaded rod that goes down the middle, and then I use two one and a half inch washers these are the both front washers that hold the o-ring in place right up front here if you guys can see those two metal washers in beside of each of the o-ring and basically what i need to do with these is because they don't fit in my plunger tube i'm gonna have to cut them down and sand them down till they fit so that this will fit in but basically that is how i'm able to get the o-ring to sit in that slot up there and then as you can see i have a little little nylon washer that I got from Lowe's as a spacer between the plunger head and the catch notch. And what you need to do for that is so that way the catch can go all the way back. I'll put it through. So this way, that means the catch can go all the way around to where it needs in order to be behind the retaliator catch and lock in. And then the plunger head isn't back far enough so that it doesn't interfere with this back wall right here. That's on the tie. It's a little blue wall right there. So that's how that works. And basically, I'm going to start assembling this while I do it. This is a 1024 uh, bolt, 6 inches long is what I use. And I'm just going to tighten this on the front because it's not going to be going in here. Oh, wait, actually. I'm going to be smart about this. I'm going to put this one on. This is going to be the far one, so I'm going to actually bring this out here. Just really tighten this one a little bit. All right. So now, with, once we have that nylon washer separating these, we have another wa washer, which is one of these. This is just a one-inch washer, and again, I had to cut it down in order to fit into the catch on my Alpha Trooper. I believe I'm gonna have to cut it down a little bit more to fit onto the Retaliator catch, just because that's a stock Retaliator catch. And this one was a homemade catch, so I was able to cut them both so that they would fit each other. Whereas now I have to make this fit with a part that's already been made. And then with this, all I did was just a little bit of poxy putty to make this nice little ramp. So that when the catch comes, comes in, it just goes up and over and locks into place with no issues. And then there's another nylon spacer right here, which I have 17 seconds over because 17 seconds is good for a nice little spring spacer of both the 62 Hillman and the 25 newton spring. For this one, I'm going to be using 9 16 because I have it. It'll still work with both the springs, so that's what I'll be doing. And yeah, I'm going to get started on that. So first things first is the one inch washer right on there. Uh, I'm, going to need, I'm going to need to cut these down. <coughs> Which is where the tools come in. So for all this build, I have a drill, an angle grinder, and a Dremel. That should be all you really need. Everything else is pretty easy to cut. I made this entire this entire piece already with the Dremel, and it was no issue. But once we get onto this, I'll give you guys a full explanation 
how to make that. And so, oh, yeah. so the length that you have to cut down the nylon facer between the catch and the plunger head is kind of to be determined. I just sort of cut it down until I felt proud with it. I'm gonna actually mark it off with a sharpie, and then I can measure it down for you guys. Best ruler ever. <laughs> So this is a half inch nylon spacer that's tapped for, what, like 1032 basically. And I'm just gonna use it and it looks like I'm gonna be cutting it down to about uh, three eighths of an inch. And then that should be good. I'm gonna cut it extra long just to be safe. Safety, oh my safety glasses. trying to save as much space as possible with this build because I want it to be allowed I want to be able to feed full length darts so I need to save every little inch that I possibly can when making this and I can cut that down just a little bit more a lot of this is If you're looking, I'm lining up the rear washer with as close to the back of the retaliator catch as I can. And then I'm trying to line up this front washer with the little wall down there. It takes a little bit to see, but I have about a couple millimeters more than I can send it down. And then it'll be good to go. So I finally got the nylon washer cut down to a length that I feel is good. And so I'm going to pop both of these nylon lock nuts on either side of the one and a half inch washers with the one inch washer separating them so that I can get nice clean cuts on both of them and then basically once I have these two locked in together I'm going to pop this into a drill and I'm going to do sort of the janky man's lathe so now that I have these locked in basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to chuck this into the chuck of a drill and then once I get this able to be spinning up fast enough I'll be able to use the angle grinder and touch this and cut it down to the size that I need to fit in. All right. Um, so basically, I'm just going to keep the plunger tube close. Every time I cut it down, I'm going to test it to make sure that once I get it to the right size, it can be cut down. I'm going to try to do this so the sparks go away from the camera.
Like it's gonna sit in there just fine. And a plunger tube. He fits. Might actually have to add a little Teflon tape on that monkey if they want you to sit properly. Huh. Mm. Who knows? All right. So now uh, I'm testing out a new washer. This isn't a one-inch washer. This is probably like three-quarter inch. And I'm just hoping that it's gonna work without me having to cut it. So I'm just gonna tighten these bolts onto each other and then cut down the front. And then I'm gonna start working on the epoxy putty. Where is ramp? Ah, yeah. I'm gonna start working on the epoxy putty ramp and the spring guide. Make sure everything's tight as can be. Take it right off. Uh, so as you can see, the small washers aren't centered in there, so I'm gonna have to fix that because they didn't have washers that had the right OD with the right ID for this bolt, so they don't line up properly, which is mighty disappointing if you ask me. And I'm real upset that my Ace had the right washer. So, one thing I forgot to mention when I was making this ramp with E-Putty, you can see just a little bit there, there's a little bit of CBVC that I have to act as a spring stop because neither of these springs can fit over half of CBVC. So what I'm simply just going to do is I'm going to cut a little segment of CBVC and then it's just going to go right over the little washer that I have there and then I'm going to put a putty on that. Rest in peace. Bye. So another great thing about the CBVC is that it fits onto these half inch nylon spacers that I have perfectly. Oh, okay, I lied. Point. got this all glued together and super glued on I'm gonna just get some epoxy putty out and build up that ramp there for the catch doesn't really matter how much you put on I'm gonna clean this up afterwards using my good old lathe technique so definitely it doesn't look great right now but I'm gonna let that dry and then I'll be able to sand it and finish. I have better pipe cutters. Sorry. Are those working? Yeah, I, I really want it to bevel in Oh, the sides. okay, yeah. But I need someone to do that. <laughs> because I need it so that it'll go through the spring. Smith. Yeah.
Get back, get a little dirty. Hey, hey, catch it. So, there we go. Now you guys can see it caught, and if I pull the trigger, if I hold this, it doesn't fly forward. It's hard to do because I don't have the screws in the shell. A little bit of refining needs to be done. It's still not perfect just yet. But right now I'm just trying to test to make sure the plunger rod is working. So I have the plunger tube, the catch, and the plunger rod in, and then I just pull on the plunger rod. And top. If I pull the trigger, doesn't really line up perfectly, so I may have to sand it a little bit. 